<clears throat> in preparation for this talk, I did some research on my own company's website. I looked in Google Search Console to find out how many times Google crawled our site on a particular day. You'll see the number there. I wanted to compare that to what actually happened in our server logs. As you can see, the number in our server logs is different. Now, you might ask yourself, what's the big deal? It's not that big of a difference in the number, and it's only one day. But think about the implications of this statement. Take this difference in crawls over one day and think about what it means in terms of the differences that you will see in Google Analytics versus your server logs in terms of visits, conversions, leads, transactions, and everything else. The data that you see in Google Analytics is wrong. It's not accurate. So before I go further, and oh, um, first I must uh, clarify, why is, is there a difference between what you see in your server logs and what you see in Google Analytics? The reason is that Google Analytics is client-side code that appears on, that is placed on the front end of your site. Server data, obviously, is direct server-side information. If the Google Analytics code is blocked or otherwise does not execute, then we have no information on what is occurring. All that information is in your server logs. So before I go any further into what you need to check in your server logs in an SEO context, uh, the important thing to keep in mind is that we as marketers have two sets of data. We have the blue pill fantasy of Google Analytics data, but we have the red pill reality of server log data. And if you want to know what is actually occurring on your website and on your, in your servers, you need to look at your server logs. But don't take my word for it. You can do your own research. This is my first MozCon, both as an attendee and as a speaker. So I don't know if Moz ever assigns homework. But I'll, I'll give all of you a task. Find out who in your company has access to your server logs. It might be you. It might be your IT um, manager. It might be your DevOps engineer or your sysadmin. Send him an email asking for a week's worth of server log data. Ask him to bucket it by day. Now compare that, what, compare what you see to what you see in Google Analytics, and I think you'll be shocked. And what I would like to see is that if you can send, if you do this research, uh, tweet it to me and uh, Logs.io on Twitter, because we're going to compile this data. And if we get enough responses, we'll, we'll create a white paper on this topic, and we'll release it for all, all of your reference. OK. So, so now, before I go into server log analysis for SEO, first, I want to go uh, give you a little background on what exactly are logs. In an, in an IT environment, you have different types of machines, and you'll see a list at the top of the slide. Uh, servers, networks, you know, everything you can think of. Um, all of these machines continuously output data based on their performance. Whenever these machines do something, it is logged and recorded in those machines. Um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 364 days a year. So what people can do is to go into these machines and look at log data to, f to find out problems, to uh, find out what's happening in their servers, for example, and many other purposes I'll go into in a bit. <clears throat> there we go. So essentially, you need to do server log analysis if you want to know what is happening in your servers on your website. And I'm not the only one who has noticed. <clears throat> so how can you solve this problem easily? I'll tell you what we do in our own company. We use an open source stack of software called the ELK stack. And it consists of Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Logstash collects all of your logs and ships them into Elasticsearch, which is a searchable database. And then, and then Kibana takes that data in Elasticsearch 
and visualizes it for you like this. This is a dashboard that we created for our own use to analyze my, our, our server logs. So this is a real-time monitoring dashboard using this open source software that I use to see what's happening on our website and, in, and on our servers in real time. And all of you can do the exact same thing with this open source software. And at the end, I have a list of informational resources that you or your DevOps engineers or your sysadmins can use to build your own dashboard if you want. Now, again, why exactly do you want to do log analysis? There are three main use cases. The first one is IT operations. Um, I'll give you an example. Say you're a marketing SaaS company like Moz or Buffer or anyone else who's here. Your product depends on it working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It can't fail because if, you, if it fails, you lose your customers. So uh, what, what you can do is look for these failures and find them in the log data. Whenever there's a failure, the first place that it will be re recorded is in your log data. Uh, second, the other second use case is security and compliance. It's related. Whenever there's a hack, an intrusion, or un unauthorized access into your systems, you'll see it first in your log data. But the third reason is why we're all here. You can use your log data, obviously, for business intelligence and marketing, and specifically technical SEO. That's my personal favorite. So here I'll show you an example of what's called a server log entry. Every single time that anything is requested from a server, a file, a picture, a URL, one log entry like this is outputted um, in the log files. So now, for example, I'll walk you through the elements of this one by one very quickly. What you see in white is the IP address in question. What you see in blue is the timestamp of the, re of the re request. Uh, what's in green is called the, uh, the method. The two main methods are get and post. Uh, get is when somebody is requesting something from a server, like a web page. Post is when, something is submitted, is when someone submits something to a server, like if you submit a blog post comment to a website, like Moz. The, the red part is the URI, which is the specific item that is being requested. Uh, most often, it's a URL. The item in blue, I'm sorry, orange, is the response code. I'm sure we all know what those are. This is a 200 OK response code. And the item in purple is the browser that's being used at this time and the user that is making the request. In this, in this case, it's a Googlebot. Wrong way. There we go. So again, every single time something is requested from a server log file, a single server log entry is recorded and, and stored. A batch of server log entries is called a server log file. And, all of, and your servers almost always create a single server log file every single day. What that means is that if you want to find out what happened on your server uh, two days ago, that there is a log file in your, in your server that it most likely has a name of that, of that date. <clears throat> now, here's the fun stuff. So you want to analyze your server logs to see what's going on. What specifically do you need to look for? What problems can arise? And how can you fix them? These six things are the six major things to check in your server logs when you do technical SEO in, in that specific context. We'll, go, we'll take these one by one. Um, bot crawl volume, OK. In the past, when technical SEOs would do log analysis, most of the time they would request a batch of log, uh, a batch of log files from their DevOps engineer or their sysadmin. And then they would you know, look at the data, see what problems there are, and fix them. But there's a problem. When you export a batch of log data in that way, you're only looking at a moment in time. You, you cannot see overall historical trends, which is where the story really lies. For example, when you look at bot crawl volume, you can see the number of requests made by Googlebot, Yandex, uh, Yahoo. That's probably pretty low by now, <laughs> the number of requests being made by Yahoo. Um, and, and you can see if there's a big dip, that indicates a problem that you, that you need to fix. So if there's a big dip in um, the number of requests that, say, Googlebot is making of your website, you, know, you want to check your robots.txt file, your robots meta tags, 
and also look for errors in Google Search Console. Response code errors. One thing you can do when you do server log analysis is batch um, URLs and overall directories by response code. You can collect all of your 404s together, all of your 302s together, so you know exactly where the problems are occurring and, and, uh, what, and what needs to be done to fix them. A common example, obviously, is uh, 302 redirects. Uh, I'll just, in case people, someone here doesn't know what a 302 redirect is, it's a temporary redirect. It's a redirect that tells Google, oh, I mean, end users, that I'm going to redirect you from this URL to this URL, but only for a temporary time, time frame. The problem is that temporary redirects don't pass uh, link juice. So most, 99% of the time, you want to change temporary redirects 302 to a 301, which is a permanent redirect. And those do pass uh, link juice. <clears throat> um, crawl priorities, okay. So when you also group your um, URLs and directories together, you can see what parts of your website are getting crawled the most and the least by search engines. And the question to ask yourself is, does that match your business priorities? Say you're an e-commerce website. Say you update the shoes section of your site every single day, but you update the furniture section of your website once a month. You want Google to crawl the directory with shoes a lot more often than you want Google to crawl the directory with furniture. So what you can do is um, <clears throat> excuse me, set the priorities in your XML sitemaps to reflect those business priorities. Last crawl date. Did you make a change to a page and you want Google to crawl and, and index that straight away? Uh, you can look in your log files to see the last time that Googlebot crawled any URL, image, file, page, whatever. And if you've updated a page or created a new page and Google hasn't found it yet and it's critically important, then you can submit that URL, URL directly in Google Search Console. Crawl waste. Okay, this is the most complicated one. Google sets a crawl budget for every single website. The problem is that if Google is crawling your website and Googlebot hits that limit before finding uh, new content or updated content, Googlebot will leave your site before it crawls that information and therefore will not, those changes or those new pages will not be reflected in the SERPs. The most common reason for crawl budget waste is the use of URL parameters. Now we love URL, URL parameters, right? We've already talked about them. The problem is that if you have 10 different links going to the same page because of parameters, then Google and other search engines will find that page through 10 different methods. What that means is that Google is crawling uh, the same page 10 times, and that doesn't need to happen. It's, it's, it's a waste. So what you can do is uh, you, can tell Google, you can block Google from accessing URLs with parameters that you define. So in your robots.txt file, uh, there's also a URL parameters section in Google Search Console. You can tell Google, do not crawl URLs with these parameters that you define. So Google will be blocked from, from accessing and crawling those URLs, and Googlebot will only crawl the direct URLs on your site. So there is no more waste. <clears throat> okay, great. So this is the list of resources I've mentioned, by the way. Um, again, if anyone here wants to create your own uh, dashboard to monitor your <clears throat> server logs in real time, this is a bunch of informational material on the ELK stack. Again, it's open source. You can go to uh, the source uh, web pages. You can, you can go to GitHub, lots of places <clears throat> to get this information, to get even other information. It, it, it's on the deck, which I'll tweet out in a few minutes so you can see. Um, so basically, uh, the nutshell is that, as we all know, technical SEO is an important part of SEO. If Google cannot access, crawl, and parse your website, nothing else you do will matter. Technical SEO is critical. And server log analysis is a crucial part of technical SEO. And if you can become an expert on server log analysis, then like Neo, you'll be the one.
Hi, Samuel. That was really great. Thank you. So, okay. When analyzing logs, what's your perspective on a URL that returns inconsistent response codes? Is that an anomaly or an issue? A URL that returns different response codes, uh, can, like, rapidly? I'm not sure what. It doesn't say rapidly. It just says codes. So answer, answer it rapidly. <laughs> OK, well, that's actually a very interesting. I, I, I presume the, the person is asking, say you see that a URL is going from a 202 to a 404 to a 302 to who knows what um, over time. I've actually never encountered that myself, so that's a very I interesting question. Um, to be honest, I don't have an answer because I've never encountered that before, so I don't have an answer. I'm sorry. Is the server logs for things like response code errors more accurate than using crawl software like Screaming Frog? OK, um, I don't want to come off as endorsing or criticizing any other log analysis software. That's not my point. My point is to just um, show you what you need to find uh, using whatever tools you might want to use. So um, a, a, lot of a lot of tools out there will access your server logs um, and then show you the, the information directly. Um, but beyond that, I really don't want, don't okay. want to uh, endorse any of them. Uh, AdWords bots? crawl websites for quality score metrics. Have you been able to track how often which pages AdWords bots is crawling? Have you run experiments to see how you can get it to crawl paid landing pages more often? Oh, that's very interesting. Um, OK, so also to that, I don't have an answer because I, uh, my, my team focuses more on the or organic side. So we, don't have, we haven't really looked into the paid side of things. Um, but actually, whoever asked that question, if you could uh, send me a tweet with that, um, I would love to actually do the research myself uh, to find the answer to that. And I'll get, I'll get back to you um, in a couple of days maximum. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.